The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the 2016 Office of Group Benefits Annual Enrollment Webinar. My name is Dean Moberly, and it is our hope that the information contained in this webinar is helpful to you and your family in making an informed decision as far as your health care needs for the next plan year. So let's briefly talk about some important facts. If you would like to remain in your current OGB health plan with the same covered dependents for the 2016 plan year, you need do nothing this year. You're happy with the plan you're in, you're going to continue with the same level of coverage as far as your dependents, you need do nothing. Your coverage will transfer from 2015 to the 2016 plan year. But please keep in mind that if you are enrolled in one of our HSA plans or if you're in our FSA plans, you'll need to renew those by the date and update your contributions for 2016. Next important fact is that there is no copay, coinsurance, deductibles, or out-of-pocket maximum changes for our Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans this year. So everything remains the same in the Blue Cross plans active employees, if you're going to make a change, you must do so on our new online portal or through your human resource department. There will be no paper forms for you to complete as an active employee. Retirees, you may use our portal. You can write directly to the Office of Group Benefits or the new booklets that were mailed do have a form contained in them. So these are our timelines. October 1st, the enrollment will begin. It will end on November the 15th, and the new plan year will begin January 1st. All right, during the annual enrollment, you can enroll in a, new, in a different health plan. You can apply for life insurance. You can add or delete dependents. You may discontinue OGB coverage completely. You may determine the amount of your HSA, your health savings account contribution, and that option is only for active employees. And you may enroll, renew, or change your contribution to the flexible spending arrangements. That is also only available to active employees and rehired retirees. So your plan options this year. We will again offer our Pelican plans. The um, Pelican plans offer lower premiums in combination with an employer contribution to create the most affordable options for enrollees in 2015. Pelican plans offer coverage within the Blue Cross and Blue Shield nationwide network as well as out-of-network coverage in both of our Pelican plans. So first plan in the Pelican is the Pelican HRA 1000. This plan includes an $1,000 annual employer contribution for employee-only plans and a $2,000 for family plans in a health reimbursement arrangement that can be used to offset deductibles and other out-of-pocket medical, non-pharmacy, and costs throughout the plan year. The funds are available as long as you remain enrolled in the Pelican HRA 1000 plan. Any unused funds will accrue to the in-network out-of-pocket maximum, and that amount is going to be available in the chart coming, and allows the plan members to build up the balance that, co for, that cover eligible medical expenses. So in this plan, the employer contribution for a single is $1,000. The employer contribution for an employee plus one or more is $2,000. The deductibles are as seen on the screen, in-network and out-of-network. Your out-of-pocket max, in-network and out-of-network are noted on the screen, as well as the coinsurance for in-network and out-of-network. Prescription drugs in this plan work, uh, work exactly like they are currently working. One of your, pres your prescriptions will be on one of these four tiers. You'll pay the appropriate copay to the right. Once you pay the $1,500 in that plan year, 
then your copays go to the lower copays on the bottom of the screen. The account, the HRA account, is monitored by Blue Cross. So when a claim is presented to Blue Cross, Blue Cross calculates what your out-of-pocket cost would be for that claim. If there is money in your HRA account, Blue Cross will pay your cost out of the HRA account. Once your account is exhausted, then you would have to come out of pocket for those costs. It's also important to remember that in this plan, only the health side, the left side of the screen, applies to the HRA contribution. The prescription drugs are not eligible to be paid out of your HRA account. Second Pelican plan is the Pelican HSA 775. This plan offers the lowest premium in addition to a health savings account funded by both the employers and the employees. Employers contribute $200, then they match the employee contribution up to $575. Employees can contribute additional funds on a pre-tax basis up to $3,350 for an individual or $6,750 for a family to cover out-of-pocket medical and pharmacy costs. Unused funds accrued every year with no limit. So there's no limit that this account can accrue to. And unlike the previous Pelican HRA 1000, the Pelican HSA 775, it's your account. You maintain it, you keep it. If you retire, you terminate service with the state, you go to an agency that may not participate in the Office of Group Benefits, then the, pl the account goes with you. Unlike the HRA 1000, if you terminate, retire, I'm not retire, I'm sorry, if you terminate or go to an agency that does not participate in our plan, then you would lose that account. In the HRA, in the HSA 775 plan, again, you have the $200, you enroll in the health plan, your employer is going to contribute $200 towards your account. Then your employer will um, match the next $575 that you deduct out of your um, pay to go into the account. Your employer is going to pay $775, and then you can continue your contributions up to the maximums that we mentioned earlier. This plan has an in-network and out-of-network deductible. It has an in-network and out-of-network maximum. And then you have your coinsurances. The coinsurance, that percent listed on the screen is what you'll pay out of pocket once you satisfied your deductible. The prescriptions in this plan work a little different than the previous plan and the plans that are coming up in that they have only four tiers. So the prescription you have will be on one of these tiers, you'll pay the appropriate copay to the right that's listed on the screen. This plan has a debit card. So as you're making your purchases for your prescriptions, as you're making your um, coinsurance or your deductible amounts at the pharmacy or at the um, doctor's offices and so forth, you can swipe your card and pay it out of the account as you go. All benefits in this plan, including prescriptions, are subject to your deductible. The exception to that is wellness benefits and maintenance medication. A maintenance medication is an ongoing prescription that you're going to take basically for the rest of your life. You go in for a case of the flu, you have the office visit, and then you have the prescription for the antibiotic. Both of those will go towards the deductible in this plan. But again, the HSA plan is portable. You switch around agencies, you leave government, state government or whatever, you take the account with you. It's yours to keep. All right, this is a good chart. It's got a lot of information on it. Now, I'm not going to go over all the lines one by one, but it gives you a good comparison of the HRA versus the HSA. But let's look under the flexibility um, portion. If you are in the HRA account, you can also enroll in our general purpose FSA. 
and I'll go over the general purpose FSA in a moment when we get to the flexible benefits portion of the um, presentation. If you enroll in the Pelican HSA plan, you're only eligible to enroll in our limited purpose FSA. The difference in the two, general purpose covers all expenses in the plan itself, all of your out-of-pocket costs, plus costs that are not associated with the plan. Braces for your teeth, dental work, eyeglasses, things of that nature. Those, all, all those expenses can be included in your general purpose FSA. In the limited purpose, you can only put dental and vision services or um, expenses in that account. So that's the difference in the two, the HRA versus the HSA plan. All right, that concludes the two Pelican plans. That brings us to our three Magnolia plans. First plan we're going to discuss this afternoon is the Magnolia Local Plus. Magnolia Local Plus offers a benefit in a nationwide network. It provides a predictability of co-payments rather than using employer funding to offset out-of-pocket costs. This plan provides care in the Blue Cross and Blue Shield nationwide network. Out-of-network coverage is provided only in emergencies and it may be subject to balanced billing. And I'll go over balanced billing again in a moment. All right, so if you are an active employee or a non-Medicare retiree, after March 1st of 2015, these are your benefits, current benefits and benefits to go in effect uh, for the 2016 plan year. There were no changes in these benefits. In the local plus, you have co-pays for certain services. If the service you have has a co-pay, then that's all you pay. You're done. If the service does not have a copay listed, then that service is going to be subject to your deductibles. So deductibles noted on this screen are family deductibles. So they're not individuals. So please keep that in mind. Prescription in this plan are through Med Generation, Med Impact rather, I'm sorry. And again, they work just like the Pelican HRA 1000. There are four tiers. Your prescription will fall on one of these four tiers. Once you've reached the $1,500 out of pocket, then you go to the lower copays at the bottom of the screen. Please note again, there is no out of network coverage in the local plus other than for an emergency situation. If you retired before March of 2015, these are your benefits in this plan. You'll note that there is no deductibles. They continue to have the co-pays just as we had previous. Prescriptions in this plan before March of 2015 are identical to what they had after 2015. Our next plan is the Magnolia Local um, open access, I'm sorry. The open access, it differs from the other Magnolia plans in that the member enrolled in the open access will not pay copayments at physician's visits. Instead, once a member's deductible is, um, for allowable charges is met, he or she will pay 10% of the allowable amount for in-network care and 30% of the allowable amount for out-of-network care out-of-network care may be balanced billed. And though the premiums in the open access plan are higher than OGB's other plans, its moderate deductibles combined with a nationwide network make it an attractive plan for members who live out of state and desire the flexibility of, to use an out-of-network provider. So for actives and retirees after 3-1 of 15, these are your benefits in the Magnolia open access. You have the deductible. Again, they are family deductibles. Once you've met your deductible in this plan, you pay your in-network coinsurance of 10% or out-of-network coinsurance of 30%, again, of the contracted rate. Prescriptions in this plan are, again, through MedImpact. 
and they work the same as the t previous two plans. Your prescription will hit on one of these four tiers. You'll pay the appropriate copay to the right. Once you've reached your $1,500, then it goes to the um, lower copays. Both Pelican plans and all three Magnolia plans, your drug cost out of pocket, your deductibles, and your coinsurance and your copayments all funnel and add into your out of pocket max. And that was a change in the current year and it's carrying over to next year as well. So everything you pay in your plan out of network goes towards your out of pocket max. For retirees prior to 31 of 15, these are your benefits. The deductibles are a little lower, your percent coinsurances are the same, and then your drug um, copays are the same in this plan as well. All right, our third Magnolia plan is our Magnolia Local. The Magnolia Local plan is a limited provider in-network only plan. And let me repeat that. It is a limited provider in-network only plan. And it's only for members who live in a specific covered area. The Magnolia Local is a health plan for members who want local access, affordable premiums, and a new approach to health care. Out-of-network coverage is provided only in emergencies and may be subject to balanced billing. So what's the difference about the Magnolia, what is different about the Magnolia Local Plan? Your network of doctors and hospitals is more defined than other plans. You still have a full network of primary care doctors, specialists, and other health care providers in your area. You have a coordinated care team that talks to one another and helps you get the right care in the right places. Staying in network is very important. Your residents will determine which Magnolia local network you will, what you will use. And before you choose the local plan, please consider which doctors, clinics, hospitals do you use most? Are the providers in the limited network? Staying in network is very important. As long as you receive care within your network, you will pay less than if you received care outside of the network. So again, based on your residency, that determines which um, network you would be in. In the Community Blue Network, you must reside in East or West Baton Rouge Parish, Ascension, Bossier, and Caddo. You have access to the following hospitals in Baton Rouge and the Shreveport area, the Baton Rouge General in Baton Rouge, and the Christus Shumpert in Shreveport. If you reside in Jefferson, Orleans, or St. Tammany Parish, your network would be under the Auctioner Health System, and then in St. Tammany, it would be in the Auctioner's North Shore and the St. Tammany Parish Hospitals. Again, that is your limited network of providers in this local plan. The benefits in the local plan, if you retired on or after 3-1 of 15, are as listed on the screen. Again, very similar to the local plus. Certain services have a copay. If the service you have has a copay in this um, plan, you simply pay the copay. If the service you have does not have a copay listed, then it will be subject to the deductible. Prescriptions work the same as the other plans. They're under the med impact. Again, you'll pay the appropriate copay based on the tier of the prescription you're taking. Once you reach that $1,500 out of pocket, then you go to the lower tier, the lower copays on the bottom of the tier. If you retired before March 1 of 15, these are your benefits. And basically the difference is that there is no deductible for retirees prior to March and a lower out-of-pocket max. Prescriptions, retirement before 3 1 of 15 are identical to the previous screen. All right, so 
in the Magnolia Local and the Magnolia Local Plus. I explained that if the service has a copay, you simply pay the copay. When that service no longer has a copay listed, then those, ser those services are subject to your deductible. So this slide just gives you a few of the more common copay services. Ground ambulance, an outpatient ambulatory surgical center, an emergency room, uh, high-tech imaging, pregnancy, mental health, things of that nature. You'll see the appropriate copay to the right of the screen. That's all you pay for these services, and you're done. Some services that are subject to the deductible, outpatient professional services, chemotherapy, emergency medical services, dialysis, things of that nature. Those are subject to your plan year deductible because they have no copay. All right, that brings us to our final plan, which is our Vantage Medical Home HMO. Vantage Medical Home HMO is a patient-centered approach to providing cost-effective and comprehensive primary health care for children, youth, and adults. This plan creates partnerships between the individual patient and his or her personal physician. This plan includes a preferred provider network, that's called the Affinity Health Network, and it provides a lower copay for certain covered services as indicated by the A. H N note in the booklet. This plan also includes out-of-network coverage. If you are active or retired after March 1st of 2015, these are your benefits. There is a deductible for Tier 1. There is a deductible for Tier 2 or out-of-network. Then you have your out-of-pocket max. You have your co-pays for your primary care, your co-pays for your specialist, and then your co-insurance for your primary care in-network or specialist out-of-network. Their prescriptions work on a five-tier program, again, based on which prescription is um, given to you or written for you. It will hit one of those five tiers and you'll pay the appropriate copay to the right. If you retired before March 2015, this slide outlines your benefits in the Vantage Medical Home HMO. All right, so we're encouraging you to make sure that you choose a doctor or a hospital in your provider network when you need health care. By choosing the network providers, you avoid the possibility of having your provider bill you for amounts in addition to applicable co-payments, co-insurance deductibles, and non-covered services. And that is what's commonly referred to as balanced billing. What happens when you go out of the network? If you have a benefit for out of network in your plan, the benefits will be based on what that contracted rate will have been for a in-network provider. So if the cost is five thousand, the billed amount is five thousand dollars, but the actual contracted rate or the approved rate for that service would have been two thousand. Your out-of-network benefits are based on the two thousand dollar approved amount. You'll pay your appropriate plan benefit, whatever it may be. But because that is an out-of-network provider, he will charge you the difference between his billed amount, the five thousand dollars, and the approved amount the $2,000. So you'll have to pay that $3,000 difference in full plus whatever your plan dictates as your out-of-network cost. That's what's called balanced billings. It's always less cost to the member to stay in network when at all possible. All right, so let's talk briefly about enrollment process, how to enroll in all of these good benefits. So, if you are an active employee and you're enrolling with the same health plan with the same covered dependents, you can go through the portal or you can go to your HR department. If you're enrolling in a separate health plan with different, if, if you're enrolling in the same health plan with different or new covered dependents, you can only do that through your HR department. 
If you're going to add or drop dependents, you may only do that during a, in your HR department. If you're electing the HSA plan or the FSA contributions, you can do that through our portal or through our H, your HR department. And if you can discontinue OGB coverage completely, you may do that through your HR department only. For retirees, if you're going to roll in a health plan with the same covered dependents, you can do that through the portal and enrollment form, which is included in your in, um, enrollment guide that was mailed to you, or you may do it directly to the Office of Group Benefits. If you're going to enroll in a health plan with different or new covered dependents, then you can do that only through Office of Group Benefits. If you're going to add or drop dependents, or you're going to discontinue OGB coverage, you can only do that through OGB. Now, please keep in mind, retirees, that if you drop our coverage, you are forever out. So please consider that before you make a decision that you'll have to live with for the rest of your life. There are a few exceptions to that for the most part. In retirement status, you can add, delete dependents, change plans and all during our enrollment period and so forth, but as long as you maintain coverage on yourself. If you drop it because the grass is greener on the other side, you better hope the grass stays greener because you can't come back. So again, please keep that in mind. All right, if you wish to use our annual enrollment portal, you can go to our website at www.groupbenefits.org and it will be available October 1st through the November 15th deadline. You will take your current Blue Cross or Vantage ID card and enter the ID number as indicated on the front of the card. And then you're going to put the last four digits of your social security number. Once that information is input into the portal, it will populate what plans are available to you. You make your selection. If you're going to go into the HSA plan, you need to make that contribution amount. If you're going to re-enroll in our FSA plan, you put that contribution amount. Then you must hit submit. Please remember your option or your um, your selection goes nowhere unless you hit that submit button. Once you hit the submit button, then it's going to give you the option to print, email, and save that confirmation page for your records, which is important. Retirees, this is a copy of the form itself that's in your enrollment guide that was mailed to you. You can go through the portal as outlined in the previous slide, you can use this um, annual enrollment form. Some of the other benefits that we're going to offer again this year, our flex plan. Our flexible benefits plan are tax saving benefits. They enable employees to save both state and federal income taxes on eligible payroll deductions for health care and dependent care expenses. Please keep in mind that these flexible benefit offerings are only for active employees or rehired retirees. All right, these are your options. You can enroll in the general purpose FSA. It allows you to put money pre-taxed for qualifying medical expenses for you, your spouse, and your eligible tax-dependent children. You should consider if paying out-of-pocket medical expenses such as health plan co-pays, health plan deductibles, vision expenses, dental expenses, et cetera. And the limited purpose, dental and vision flexible spending arrangement. It allows you to pay with pre-tax dollars for dental and vision expenses for you, your spouse, and your eligible tax-dependent children while you maintain your eligibility to, to contribute to your HSA. You should consider it if you're enrolled in the HSA 775 health plan. And then the third option is your dependent care flexible spending arrangement. It allows you to pay with pre-tax dollars eligible dependent care expenses for your child or for a spouse, parent, or other dependent who's incapable of self-care. You should consider this option if you pay for your care of a spouse, eligible dependent, while you are at work. For the dependent care, 
your, the submission of dependent care expenses can be reduced by signing a DCFSA recurring expense service form. Reimbursement in the dependent care account is only available to what's in the account. There is a minimum of $600 that you could put into the account. You must re-enroll every year, and then you must file an IRS form 2441. That reoccurring expense form, it makes it easier to file a claim if your expenses stay consistent throughout the year. They do not fluctuate with how many children you have that week in, the, in daycare or how many times they go or whatever. If it's a consistent and constant amount that never changes, you can do the uh, dependent reoccurring expense form and then it's going to automatically do it for you. You do not have to file a claim every month or every two weeks or however often you would do it. So it's a, it's a savings for you to not have to do claim forms every time you need to submit. All right, again, the $600 minimum for the dependent care. The maximum amounts are shown on the screen depending on your tax, tax status and what dependent you are have you have the um, services for. You go from $2,500 up to $5,000 a year. Again, the funds for the dependent care must be in the account to use it. In the general purpose or the limited purpose, they're funded January 1st, the beginning of the new year. By the general purpose, for enrollment rules, and for all three, the general purpose, limited purpose, and the dependent care, you must be an active full-time employee in a participating payroll system. You can enroll during annual enrollment or after experiencing an IRS recognized qualifying event. You must re-enroll each year to continue participation and agree to pay the $36 annual administrative fee. Please keep in mind that $36 is also pre-tax, so again, you won't be paying the full $36 through the year because you'll, you'll um, reimburse some of that back on your taxes. There's a new eligibility rule that new hires must enroll within their first 30 days of full-time employment. Your participation will be effective the first of the following months after your first full calendar month of employment. So if you were hired on August the 20th, you've enrolled in, the, in one of our FSA plans within that first 30 days, your effective date for the account is October the 1st. All three FSA accounts receive a debit card, and again, that's a, a screen print of it on the um, slide. As you purchase prescriptions, as you pay for your co-pays, as you're meeting your deductible at the office visit, any cost for you out of pocket in the plan, you can swipe the Discover card and it will, um, the Visa card rather, and it will pay for those expenses out of your pre-tax account. The, account is, the card is reloaded every year, so if you notice you're a current member, you'll notice there's an expiration date. I have exhausted my account for this year, spent all of my money, but I know that my expiration, my card does not expire for two more years. So I'm maintaining that same card until I reload it for January 1st. So always pay attention to the expiration date. If you have um, contact information for Discovery Benefits, Discovery Benefits is the, con is the company that handles our flex accounts for us, for the Office of Group Benefits, and that is their contact number on the um, slide in front of you. All right, that brings us to our life insurance. Life insurance is a option that is through Prudential, underwritten by Prudential for the state of Louisiana. Um, you can offer, we offer you a basic plan. For the employee, a basic plan is $5,000. You enrolled in that 20 years ago when you started your career with the state, it's still $5,000. It would not have increased. There are two options under the basic life for your dependents. You can get $1,000 on your spouse or $500 for each of your dependent children, or you can get $2,000 on your spouse and a thousand for each of your dependent children. Please keep in mind that the employee or retiree premium for your um, life insurance is paid half and half. You pay 
and your agency, current or retired, pays 50%. For your dependents, you pay the full amount, and again, the amount that you pay depends on which option you've um, enrolled in. Our second life insurance option is our basic plus supplemental. The amount that the employee is eligible for under this life insurance um, portion is based according to your income, your salary. As your salary increases through your career, the amount of the life insurance increases as well to a maximum of $50,000. That's the maximum amount that anybody employed with um, an OGB participating employer can have in life insurance. Under the basic plus supplemental, you have two options for your dependents. Option one offers $2,000 for your spouse and $1,000 for each child. Option two, the spouse covers for $4,000 and each child is $2,000. Again, just like the basic plan, the employee pays half of your life insurance and your agency pays a half. For the dependent life, you pay the full amount. The only change in life insurance and it's not a change this year, it's a change that happens as you age. Once you reach age 65, active or retired, doesn't matter. The January 1st following your 65th birthday, the face life amount that you had at that point will be reduced by one quarter. The January 1st following your 70th birthday, it will reduce by an additional quarter. So you'll be down to half of what you started with, and then that's the last um, decrease. There will be no further decreases after that. So this is our contact information. I'm sure you probably have a few questions after watching this webinar. So if you have any questions of your benefits, you can call Blue Cross Drug, you can call Med Impact if you're enrolled in Vantage. Or if you have some issues with discovery benefits, those are the contact information, or contact numbers rather, and website addresses for those four vendors. That is the contact information for the Office of Group Benefits. Our customer service number as listed. We are open from 8 to 4.30 Monday through Friday. We have recently changed locations. So we are now currently um, housed in the Claiborne Building, which is located at 1201 North 3rd Street. We're in Suite G159, and then it's in Baton Rouge, and that is our zip code, in case you need to write to us. And that concludes our webinar. I hope you found this information um, helpful, and please give us a call if you have any questions. Thank you.